What's up guys, as promised, I'm back with Dr. Donald Lehman. I wanted to talk to you really quickly, actually, I'm gonna do more of the listening and Don is gonna tell us about this paper and he's gonna tell you a little bit about the bacteria that he found in this study that perhaps is contributing to these amino acids. So there. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so one of the things, we, again, we were proposing is that if we fed the right kind of fiber, we might get some of these more ruminant type of bacteria that were capable of making essential amino acids. So our first theory that was that, well, it would be soluble fiber. Everybody always thinks that soluble fiber like oatmeal is, is maybe the better, uh, but it turned out that it was actually the insoluble fiber cellulose that you get from like plant cell walls, like your broccoli and your, cel and your celery and things like that. Um, and what we found was that certain bacteria, and one that we found particularly was one called bacterioids dissonance. And okay. I'm not a microbiologist, Suzanne's the great one on that. But it's a unique bacteria that actually can make some of the essential amino acids. And it has the genes to make lysine, methionine, and threonine, probably the top three essential amino acids that are deficient in plants. So that was an incredible finding. And then the uh, sort of related to that, no one has really ever shown that amino acids are absorbed in the colon. We always think about them being absorbed in the upper intestine, but the only way this actually works is we have to be absorbing them much lower in the GI tract where the bugs are. So those were two major discoveries that we weren't really expecting. We thought sort of theorized about, but um, it was remarkable to find it. Wow. And I wonder, do you think that, did you find something different with inulin? So in the paper, it has cellulose and inulin. Just curious, was there- Yeah, so inulin is a soluble fiber. Mm -hmm. So we were expecting that one. Again, most people think soluble fibers, they uh, help your GI tract and mobility and all of that thing, that type of thing. And so we hypothesized that that would be the case. So we fed diets that had 5% and 15% of the uh, weight of the diet as the fiber, either as inulin or as cellulose. Right. And it turned out that the, cell, the inulin actually made, the, made it worse, <laughs> made the protein deficiency worse, and the cellulose actually corrected it. That is very interesting. So now you're pointing out, or the paper's pointing out specific types of fiber. And yeah, it's very it's, interesting because- and, in this sphere, people are adding inulin and people are also adding cellulose. And I think it's, you know, it, it's gonna be interesting to see that microbiome variability. Yeah, so this is a, you know, this is a study, people talk about probiotics and, you know, giving, you know, bacteria, but the reality is I think prebiotics, things like fiber are going to be far more important and far more sustainable. You literally can't give enough probiotics in the orally to really make much difference. I mean, you've got trillions of bacteria in your gut. Uh, and right. so you give 2 million or 2 billion even, it's irrelevant. Uh, mm. But if you can give prebiotics that ultimately change the population, I think that's going to be far more important. Really, really interesting. Well, thanks so much for that explanation explanation of the fiber component of the study and can't wait to talk about the rest. All right, guys, link to the paper below.